are so excited about this episode brought to you by the Catholic Sun as we dive into this third conversation, One in the Spirit. So we have some very unique guests on the show today, and I think you're really going to enjoy our discussion. We're going to be talking about something big, something that you may not be aware of. And so with us in the studio today, we have Bishop John Dolan and Vicar General Father John Muir of the Diocese of Phoenix. And we also have Pastor Joe Tassini here to talk with us today about the John 17 movement. This is an effort to bring Christians together. So Pastor Joe, you're one of the founders, uh, one of the co-founders of the John 17 movement. How did it get started and what's going on with it in Phoenix here today? Well, it's a story that I'll condense. It's a long story. <clears throat> Uh, put a plug in for the book. That's how you could really get the John 17, Heart of God. But when Pope Francis was elected in 2013, I happened to be in New York City at the time. My wife and I, Mary, we had an apartment in, in New York City, and it was about 3, actually it was actually 3.13 when I was awakened and I looked over and I saw the watch, uh, our clock. And I knew that I was really awakened, and I've had experiences like this over the past, that, and so I got up, and I felt God wanted me to pray, and I went into our living room, and as I started to pray, that this thought came to me, I mean, it was so strong, I want you to pray for the newly elected Pope, Pope Francis had just been elected, like, the day, a day, a day ago, you know, just recently elected. And you're, and you're a pastor, yes, you're, yes, and I, but I wasn't pastoring. My dad had passed away. Story, but I was helping my mom, and I was we we're from New York and so forth, and with the business and and my other siblings. And so I was in the living room, and it was so odd to pray. You know, like this is an odd thing, and I don't. So I started to just say, "Well, Lord, just you know, give him wisdom. I hope he loves you. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'm just praying." And instantly, as soon as I started to pray for him, I was taken back in time to an. I had in 1974 on a university campus and asked to be um, to go to a very small Pentecostal church to reach out to university students. And when I was going on the campus to get a, a permission to have our particular brand and our denomination of college outreach, I walked by seven tables during the beginning of a school year and I was, it was like I hit an invisible wall. And when I turned and looked at those seven tables, um, a question came to me. They were all Christian organizations, Campus Crusade, Navigators, Baptist Student Union. There was numerous of them, numer numerous seven of them. And the question came to me not very many years before when I was in Berkeley, California, as a university student, what would I think of that? And the answer that came out of me was seven different Jesuses. Mm. And I heard, at least inside of me, I don't want you setting up another table. I'm not a polygamist. I only have one bride. Now, that came to me as I was praying for Pope Francis. And then I heard inside two things. Several things came real quick. One, this is how you're going to end your life, what I put in your heart back then in 1974, because my denomination told me I was crazy when I talked about that. And this pope carries that, and you're going to help serve in his desire to bring the body of Christ together, and you're going to know him. Now, that was a weird thing to, uh, to, to feel, and, but, it, but it came to pass, and I just was with Pope Francis with this wonderful man right next with to me. With Father John Muir. <laughs> well, um, Bishop Dolan, why is it important right now at this point in history for Christians to be working together and for us to be sitting down together like we are today? Well, I think it's important for us now, but it, it's been important <laughs> for us in the last 2,000 years. And when we stop to dialogue, when we stop dialoguing, when we stop praying together, then we become fractured. As I've s said before, um, it, it's easy to fill a vacuum with uh, a lack of knowledge of the other or – and that translates into – distrust and even hatred. And if we can fill that vacuum with communication, with prayer, uh, and with general dialogue of based on love and based on, say, John uh, 17, mm -hmm. right, that all may be one, that was the prayer of Jesus and is still the prayer of Jesus who sits mm -hmm. at God's right hand, yes. that prayer has to continue. And it's not a unique prayer. It's an age-old prayer. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And so that prayer is a forever prayer. So 
uh, it's important now, but it was important then, and it will be important in the future. One of the things I've read about John 17, is, the John 17 movement, that is, is that it's about building relationships with people. So maybe the theology is a little different, but it shouldn't stop you from having a cup of coffee together, getting to know each other, discussing. Um, Father John, tell us about when you went to Rome to meet Pope Francis, because he really has a heart for this, too. What, what was it like to meet the pope and what, what does he bring to this? Well, I got to tell you, when I first uh, heard Joe's story several years ago, um, I, I admit I, I thought there's a chance this man is m completely making all of this up. <laughs> and as we worked together and and, um, and I got to go to John 17 events and kind of brought that spirit to my parish in the far West Valley, I got more and more sure that Joe wasn't making it up. And I was about, I told Joe after we were with Pope Francis, I'm 98%, I was 98% sure this was real. But when I saw Joe Tosini with his hand on Pope Francis's back, squeezing his arm, Pope Francis laughing and having these deep conversations in a very small room about the importance of Christian unity, I thought, he's not making it up. <laughs> it's, it's real. So for me, it was just a, it was a thrill and a joy and um, just to meet the Holy Father, but not in the kind of a touristy way or just a quick um, surface greeting, but to really talk with him as a pastor and to see how much Christian unity means to him. And there were maybe 37 or so folks in the room with Pope Francis. Five, Bishop six, Navarro seven. was there Bishop too. Navarro's, yeah. Bishop Navarro, our auxiliary bishop, Bishop uh, Eduardo Navarro. So out of those thirty-seven, yeah, Bishop Navarro, myself, maybe four, five, six others were Catholics, but but folks from all, all sorts of different uh, branches of the Catholic of uh, the Christian family. So it was just a, it was a, it was a thrill, you know. It's hard it's hard work, um, but but it, this movement really, which is from Phoenix, by the way, people in Phoenix should really know it's 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 spreading around the world, but it started here in Phoenix. Thanks to people like Joe and Bishop Navarro's, but it really starts with the heart and uh, love. By that I mean love, loving and serving each other, washing each other's feet, being honest and vulnerable, and and celebrating the unity that we do have already, even if it's not a perfect unity. So for me, being with Pope Francis and everybody there was just an experience of that love and that that unity. Beautiful, and I love I love how you're talking about it in those terms because I can remember interviewing Bishop Navarro's about this years ago and him saying that. He used to get in these radio debates with a Protestant mm -hmm. preacher, and he remembers driving home from one once and just being angry and realizing from the Lord, like, this isn't from the Lord, this this kind of anger, this is not. So he called the guy up and said, let's have a cup of coffee, and they built a friendship. And I thought that was just extraordinary because— there is resistance at times um, within denominations for us all to be together. So I, I got to ask, Pastor Joe, have you encountered resistance? Like, don't get with those Catholics. They're evil. What's yeah, that like? Yeah, I can give many, many stories of evangelical on both sides of the aisle. Very, um, Pope Francis said this, fundamentalism one time. He said, I asked him, what is the biggest hindrance? And he says, fundamentalism of any kind. And it, whether you're on the right side and as a fundamental Roman Catholic or if you're a fundamentalist on the Protestant side, you have a tendency to do, as Bishop said, not listen to each other. You wind up saying, this is what distinguishes me from you rather than what unites me with you. And what I've discovered that the resistance comes when people are just ignorant. They haven't been together. They just don't know. So I have a pastor. We have pastors in Phoenix who have been to see Pope Francis who... who were trained that the Pope was the Antichrist and who left after being with him emotionally <laughs> confessing and saying he's my brother and he has given me a completely different approach and understanding of the body of Christ. And he has done that each time we come together, each time. And Phoenix, may I just say, Phoenix is to be what he has asked to be a model that he could point people to, as John mentioned that we're believing that in Phoenix there could be a, an example of relational reconciliation where we can love one another, start at the feet rather than the head, and together be what Jesus asks us to be, be one, one and amplify that one family. Beautiful. Bishop Dahl, what is your hope for this movement here in our diocese? What do you think the future of something like this looks like, the future of the John 17 movement? Well, well, as Joe has shared, this is this is kind of putting Phoenix on the map, and I would love, and I know this would be Joe's uh, hope and prayer, uh, that this would extend beyond the Diocese of Phoenix. But in truth, as we are discovering even in this little gathering, this is something of a hidden secret, a gem, a hidden gem within, within Phoenix. We're not even... Uh, 
uh, talking about it uh, 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 enough. So I think uh, that's my hope is that we just get the message out, which it, we were talking about this just earlier, just prior to this little segment, that it – why is it so shocking that people are so afraid to have a conversation uh, about love and unity and communion? <laughs> it, 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 even in today, it, well, especially in today's day and age, we we should be about this and and be quick about it. And uh, so that's why I'm I'm very happy that this is you know this is our third segment on you right. know, the, a seat at the table, uh, really gathering with people of other traditions, other faith traditions, other uh, traditions within the Christian enterprise, and and just celebrating the what Pope Saint John Paul II once mm -hmm. said: we need to celebrate our communion even in its imperfection. Yes, and I truly believe yes. that. Yes, yes. I love that. And I think it starts with people really breaking down barriers and getting to know each other. We had a, a man that used to come and, and spray our house for, for bugs. And, you know, I would get to know him. He'd come out four times a year. And uh, somehow we got into the conversation to talk about Jesus. I don't know. He saw the cross around my neck. But we would stand out front and have these conversations. And one day he said to me, you know, I was raised in, in this Protestant tradition. And he said, uh, and my parents always say Catholics, they're bad people. Like, they don't—Catholics, whatever you do, like, stay away from them. He goes, but I had an aunt who was Catholic, and she was always so kind to me. So there was this seed of doubt. And he goes, and then I meet you, and you're, you're, you're always wanting to talk about Jesus. And he goes, I realize Catholics are Christians, too. <laughs> and I mean, standing in the driveway of my house, this is maybe yeah. 10 years ago, it was such a beautiful moment of, like, aha— Right. I mean, and we all breaking down those barriers, like how can we do that, Father John? What what's a good way for us going forward? Just the average, you know, the person who's out there viewing this right now. How can we break down walls and bring Jesus to people and bring, bring us together? Well, I'd say two things. First, for maybe uh, Catholics who are watching this, who, who maybe are like hesitant and they say, you know, like, I don't want to leave my Catholicism at the door. And isn't this ecumenical stuff kind of dangerous? Uh, I would say that it, it's. It's, it is Catholicism. I mean, Jesus came so that we may be one. I mean, that's like why that is, is salvation is unity in Christ forever of all creation. Yeah. So this is not like a side project. Like we hope we get to heaven and, and hope there's like a little ecumenical unity along the way. No, heaven is ecumenical <laughs> unity. It is the unity of the whole body of Christ. So that's good. That's good theology, by the way, to my Catholic <laughs> friends who say, what, this is not Catholic theology. It is Catholic theology. Um, the second thing I would say is, um, it starts by getting outside your, your comfort zone and, and friendship. Uh, Joe uses the word table all the time. I love the fact that the show is called a uh, place at the table, seat at the table, place seat at the, 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 seat the, seat the table. table. <laughs> because a table is where people come into communion with each other, sharing a meal, sharing their stories. And, um, you know, things are so tribal. They're so tri I mean, tribalism is a form of fundamentalism. And so when the world gets more tribalistic, which is not healthy, I think the Holy Spirit is moving the church to become less tribal <laughs> and discovering that unity. But so it's getting outside your comfort zone and just a phone call. So I would commit to, um, there was a great young pastor named Pastor uh, Ryan Nunez at the church near where I was. He was an ev evangelical pastor in uh, Palm, Palm Valley area where I was a pastor. And so we just made a commitment to pray for each other, to try to get together and have a meal and just to get to know each other in our lives. So it, there's a theology behind it, but it boils down to just very simple practices. So I would say there's someone in your life right now, someone can just say, hey, can we have a cup of coffee? I just love to get to know you. That is fantastic. And uh, Pastor Joe, you mentioned something about a movie. You've got a little bit of a beard going on here. That's not how I'm used to seeing you. Tell us a little bit about that. What's that, what's going on with it? We're, we're doing a, a documentary and it's really about love. And God is love, Pope John, Pope Paul VI, when he was asked about his most important verse to him in the Bible, he was very quick to say, God is love. And I think, as the bishop said, and as John said, that um, Jesus said, by this, all men will know that you're my disciples, that you love one another. And that's, that's the relational eternity that's in the human heart, 
that we all want to see. And Christians are supposed to put that on display. That's what makes us the light of the world. So this movie that we're doing is going to be interviewing in around tables all over the world. I'm in Africa. We're, we're all over the place. Pope Francis is in the movie. So that's kind of a gives us a little bit of a platform. I assume he's and playing he, himself. Yes. He's, okay. he's, 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 <laughs> it's yeah. not it's not an act. I'm not hacking. They just have me doing this for that. But anyway, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's just, it's you know, love is... We have three navigational tools, faith, hope, and love. That's what the Bible says. But the greatest of the three is love. Because without us displaying love, all of our professions about our faith, it all falls on deaf ears. I think it's time for us to go. I think we, have, right? we have a little bit more time. Okay. But, and, I, but uh, I thank you for that. And I, and I, and I like uh, getting to meet the bishop, having him at, for dinner once, and having him just— I remember just in introducing him to the even who I consider the evangelical bishop in the Valley of Phoenix, my friend Cal Jernigan, um, when the bishop who just openly and just said, you know, this is church. We're, we're two or three gathered together in the Lord's name, and we break bread together. And I, like for me, I, I go to mass, I go to services, I'm in every place. I'm kind of like, <laughs> I was at a cowboy church on Sunday, and I was at Our Lady of Joy. <laughs> so I kind of <laughs> you, know, you get around. I get around. Well, we're serving. My, right. We're not trying to start anything. Our joy is to see all the boats rise. If a parish is going to grow and fulfill Jesus's prayer, that's my desire to see. We're it's not. We're not starting a new. We're not a new instrument. We're just bringing the instruments together to create a symphony of love in the Valley of Phoenix that hopefully will become a symphony of service. Beautiful. To the most marginalized. I love how, how you're talking about uh, how it's the relationships and it's yes. love because we talked a little bit before the broadcast about how you learn a lot in seminary, you learn a lot of theology, but you might not learn how to love. And I think, I can't remember which pope it is, you'd probably know, said that the family is the school of love. I think that was John Paul II. Probably. The family is the school of love. So Sounds like him. <laughs> we learn how to love in, in our families. And so seeing families connect, I think, in neighborhoods. So our neighbors, uh, they live across the street, Don, Don and Ellen. We love them. Um, they're evangelical, and they walk through the neighborhood praying for every single person that lives in our neighborhood and told us they were doing that. And you know what? Yeah. We started doing that. Like, that's a beautiful thing to do. So families getting to know each other, coming out of your comfort zone, because it is so tempting to just go inside and lock well, the door. Pope and Francis says, when you say our father, we're, we're saying we're family. That's when right. We start, we're, we're not a club. <laughs> we're not a religious club. We're we're a family, and we need to put that family on display. Right. Beautiful. I just think that's what we're called to do. <laughs> so, yeah. Bishop Dolan, to sort of wrap things up here, um, what are your hopes for John 17 here in our diocese moving forward? Well, uh, I would say once again, let's uh, let's keep this uh, process of communication, dialogue, and communion going. We need to move toward communion. We need to follow the prayer of Christ, uh, the, that all may be one. That prayer is, um, it, it can't be just left on his shoulders. It needs to be uh, carried by each and every one of us. And as I think more and more about that cross that Jesus expects us to carry each and every day is the cross of this prayer. How can we pray? How can we be one? Mm. that's the cross, that all may be one. Amen. It sounds like maybe it's a good idea for us all to crack open that Bible and read John 17 and oh, go over that yes. prayer. And let's make that prayer our, our own. So as, as we move forward to just build friendships and relationships across all of these boundaries that have been erected to see how we can uh, really be the face of Christ in, in a hurting world. There's a lot of hurting people out there, and they need the love of Jesus. We need the love of Jesus, and we get that in these beautiful relationships, right? Amen. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today. And to all our viewers, uh, we're praying for you. We're praying for Christian unity. It's something that we can all uh, just really hope for. And so let's read John 17. Thanks, Joyce, thank and Merry Christmas. Thank you. Yes, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes. Thank you for being here today. God bless you all.